Thank you, Pastor. Everybody praise the Lord. Let's have a good alpha location. Amen. Father, we thank you and bless your name. You are great God, mighty God, the omnipotent, omnipresent, omniscient. You know everything. You are everywhere and you can do all things. Tonight we come. We come in your presence as souls, as creatures, as the one you have created, as believers, as those you know already who Jesus is and what Jesus has done. And Lord, we pray everyone, everyone from outside, everyone inside will have a touch of the life breaking God tonight in Jesus name Amen. our lives will be turned around Amen. our families will be turned around Amen. our personality will be turned around Amen. Lord manifest your power in every life tonight in Jesus name Amen. set your people free free to live like children of God ought to live. Take every form of sin, sickness, shame away from everyone today. Magnify your holy name. In Jesus mighty name we pray. Amen. God has blessed you. You can sit down. Remember once again, we are coming to this crusade on Jesus, the miracle worker. Take that word, miracle. M is the mercy of the Lord that he shows us and he gives us miracles of mercy. I, I, he is the intercessor, impartial. He intercedes for everyone. He interceded for the world. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. He interceded for the church. He said, Father, sanctify them through the Thy truth, thy word is truth. He intercedes for us even today. Our is the reigning redeemer for the repentant and for the righteous. When you repent and you turn away from your sin and you come from the far country as a prodigal son, as a prodigal daughter, as a prodigal man, as a prodigal woman, as a prodigal sinner, you come and you return to the Lord. He is the Redeemer who forgives who changes our lives, who turns us to the righteousness of the Lord. And A, he is the almighty advocate, an advocate that is able to forgive and set free, an advocate that pleads our cause. And not only that, empowers us not to go doing those evil things we did before is the advocate with all authority and we've looked at see the compassionate Christ with complete skill today we come to the hell the loving Lord and is with limitless liberation liberation for everyone tonight in Jesus name Jesus, the loving Lord, with limitless liberation. We're coming to Luke chapter 4. In Luke chapter 4, I'm reading from verse 18. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach, proclaim, declare the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted and to preach deliverance to the captives and the recovering of sight to the blind, to search at liberty. To search at liberty, it will loosen every cord that binds you tonight. 
every chain that binds you it will break every yoke in jesus name all the fetters around your leg around your hand all the bandage that uh, you know blocks your eyesight is going to remove that bandage tonight and everything will become clear in your life there'll be salvation today there'll be healing today there'll be deliverance today because he is to search at liberty them that are bruised he will set me free he will set me free the amen you are saying is for me say it for yourself look at verse 21 in verse 21 and he began to say unto them this day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears there's going to be a fulfillment in your life today the sin salvation will be fulfilled in your life today amen a believer sanctification Holiness, full redemption will be fulfilled in your life today in Jesus' name. You will not come in vain. If you're a believer and you are there and you think everything was seen is for the sinner and you don't have a blessing, the sanctification, the holiness, the purification of your heart that he takes away that depravity from your life and he makes you to have the heart of the new covenant believer sanctification and holiness if you don't have that and you just say well it's for the sinners then you come and you go back in vain you will not go back in vain in jesus name he gives us redemption he gives us the power to turn into a new life and you say you are a believer and everything is you know if you believe on the lord raise up your hand and that's all you think and the power to live in righteousness and to make the necessary recitation in your life you don't have that i went to crusade i was saved before i enjoyed everything you didn't enjoy everything because the power to live in a new life has not come unto you but today you will not go back home in vain in jesus name new life will come to everyone and the new love that he says you love your brother as yourself you've been you know as i've loved you and you've been struggling and struggling with that everyone should understand that the crusade is for us it's for the sinner it's for the outsider it's for the insider it's for everyone that comes and the lord will do whatever level of grace you need grace for salvation grace for sanctification and the grace to have the outpouring of the spirit of god upon you it will do it for you it will heal you it will deliver you he will set you free and he began to say unto them this day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears it tells us in john john chapter 8 verse 32 and you shall know the truth you know as we come we don't want to just hear another lie we don't want to hear deception you come to the crusade the thing that will set you free is the truth the truth about christ who is christ what can christ do what did he do and what is he doing today we want to know the truth because it is when you know the truth the truth will make you free the truth will make me free the truth will make me free it'll make you free 
from filthiness all the filthiness in your life as we come to christ what is to do is to cleanse us from all the filthiness it will cleanse you tonight in jesus name and all the fetters that bind you it's when we know the truth that jesus sets free and he breaks every yoke and every fetter in our lives he sets us free from the filthiness he sets us free from the fetters tonight your freedom has come he sets us free from the fear of man you want to stand as a man there terrify you and looking at you are you going to stand and then you have fear you cannot stand he sets us free from the fear of man he sets us free from the fear of superstition this superstition that you know people carry if you you know step on this this will happen if you say we'll put your hand there something bad will happen superstition is destroyed in your life tonight in jesus name and ye shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free look at verse 36 in verse 36 it says if the son capital s that's our savior if the son that's our substitute the one who went to the cross to die for us if the son that's the final sacrifice no more sacrifice of goat of sheep of chicken no more sacrifice of animal he is the final sacrifice and today as you look at him that final sacrifice everything that binds your life everything is broken and destroyed in jesus name if the son the savior if the son our substitute if the son the final sacrifice if the son the sanctifier shall therefore shall make you free ye shall be free indeed tonight freedom has come your freedom has come it'll set you free from sin it'll set you free from sickness it'll set you free from that satanic suffering tonight is your night tonight is my night jesus the loving lord with limited limitless Libration. We're looking at three things here. Number one, we're looking at the meaningless life of corruption and condemnation. Number two, the marvelous libration from carnality and captivity. Number three is the mediatorial love of our conversion for our conversion and consecration look at number one number one we're looking at the lives people live meaningless lives fruitless lives profitless lives that people live because of their corruption why did christ come because they saw us in a corruption he saw us in a condemnation and he knew we could not deliver ourselves therefore he came so that all the people that are embedded uh, all the people that are kind of immersed in corruption he'll bring us out he will cleanse us up it will convert our lives and condemnation will leave our lives in jesus name why is your amen so amen <laughs> number one is the meaningless life of corruption and condemnation you know if you're living in corruption the life is meaningless corruption in the office if you have that corruption your life is meaningless you are in that office and you do not know how to live you bear a christian name like i bear a christian name william maybe you bear stephen maybe you bear joseph maybe you bear mary maybe you bear martha you bear a christian name and yet your life is meaningless in corruption he wants to take you out of corruption and 
take corruption out of you actually is that corruption is that condemnation that destroyed the whole old world and anywhere there is corruption an officer is corrupt a father is corrupt a mother is corrupt a son a daughter they are corrupt anywhere there is corruption there'll be condemnation look at genesis chapter 6 i'm reading from verse 5 and god saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually evil continually sinful continually powerless continually and doing things that god had commanded we should not do and the life is corrupt and when your life is corrupt like that you don't tell me you're a christian a christian christian and corruption they're far apart when you have corruption don't tell me i'm a believer believer in what believing and corruption they're far apart they are separated you do that corruption in the secret you do that corruption in the office you take that thing that doesn't belong to you that corruption you are not a believer is tonight you are going to become a believer I said this tonight you are going to become a believer God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually look at verse 11 in verse 11 it says the earth also was corrupt before God maybe you are not corrupt before man everybody does it and everybody takes it for granted that corruption is common corruption is normal no it's abnormal it's because the whole world is corrupt and that's what we see every day and we say we feel that that is now the normal thing but before God corruption is still corruption before God sin is still sin before God evil is still unacceptable the earth also was corrupt before God and the earth was filled with violence that's Old Testament come to Matthew New Testament and look at chapter 7 verse 17 here are the words of Jesus Christ you see all the thousands of years more than about 4,000 years before the creation and Malachi the Old Testament uh, you know corruption 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 and now we come to the New Testament and the corruption is still there was still there in the world and we come to our situation today corruption is still there it says in Matthew chapter 7 verse 17 even so every good tree bringeth forth good fruit every good tree when you are born again when your life is turned around and you become a good member of the family of God you are like it to a good tree and you bring forth good fruit the fruit of the spirit there'll be love in your heart there'll be peace there'll be joy there'll be long suffering there'll be faithfulness fidelity there will be goodness in your life and all the fruit of the spirit will be coming out because even so every good tree bringeth forth good fruit but a corrupt tree who has the original corruption who has the human corruption who has the common corruption of lifestyle it says but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit look at verse 18 in verse 18 a good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit a converted person a changed person a new creature a born again man or woman private or public anywhere a good tree cannot 
because he's born again because he's saved that's what you want to have in your life be a good tree a good child of god a person that has the grace of god in the heart and then anywhere you are in your heart in your mind in your action in your hand a good tree cannot bring forth evil tree neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit if the heart is corrupt the language will be corrupt out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaketh if the heart is corrupt the action also will be corrupt because from the heart we have all the issues of life if the heart is corrupt your behavior your lifestyle will be corrupt and it will show you that you are not saved yet you are not born again yet only tonight as you say i bring this corrupt heart i bring it to the lord then the lord will change that heart tonight the Lord will turn around that life tonight and then good fruit will be coming out. It says, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Verse 19, in verse 19, every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down, cut down, and cast into the fire it says why does it cumber the land just like that in vain there's no fruit of righteousness there's no fruit of repentance there's no fruit of restitution there's no fruit of redemption and he is a corrupt tree that life is nothing good to write home to write to heaven about every tree no matter where the tree is, in the church, in the community, in the family, anywhere, every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is cut down and cast into the fire. I will not be cast into the fire. I will not be cast into the fire. I can't hear you. That means you are going to be converted from your life of corruption. If somebody is, uh, you know, robbing people in the way, robbing people on the highway, and every time he tells himself, I will not be caught, I will not go to jail, I will not be in the prison. I will not suffer. And every time he is telling himself that and he's going on the highway and he's robbing people and he's doing evil, you will be caught. You will be condemned. And you will get to that jail eventually. No matter who you are, I'm the son of so-and-so. I'm the daughter of so-and-so. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is cut down and cast into the fire. The only way not to be cast into the fire is that corruption will stop in your life. <clears throat> corruption will stop in your life. Look at verse 20. In verse 20 it says, Wherefore, by their fruits, it shall know them either it's a good tree or it's a corrupt tree by their fruits you shall know them it's not what you call yourself it's your life it's your lifestyle that's why we came to the crusade so that we bring this dirty heart to the lord this defiled heart to the lord this carnal nature will bring to the lord will bring this uh, corruption to the lord and he the liberator and our lord he will set us free in jesus name amen 
Now the meaningless life of corruption and condemnation will be taken away from every one of our lives tonight in Jesus name. Look at Isaiah chapter 1. Isaiah chapter 1. I'm reading here from verse 4. A sinful nation. A people laden with iniquity. A siege of evil doers. Children that are corruptors people who are corrupt they don't only stay in their corruption that corruption is contagious it passes from one to the other and if good people mix with them they are so powerful and they're so convincing and they're so uh, the kind of persuasive in their evil corrupt way they corrupt the people that associate each of them. It says children that are corruptors. I want to ask you, what was your life if you were born again? You were born again many years ago. You were upright. You were sincere. You were righteous. You were holy until so and so got attacked to you. I'm not talking of marriage, just, you know, it's now your friend, and then, and he is so persuasive in his action, in his lifestyle, and now you are not as righteous as you were before you met that person. Corruption has come into your life. That person is a corrupter, and Today, as you come to the Lord, you want to come to the Lord with a sincere heart in repentance, and you say, actually, corruption has come into my life. Deception has come into my life. Lying has come into my life. And desiring the pleasure of sin has come into your life. And now you come to the Lord in repentance. You say, I know every corrupt tree will be hewn down, will be cut down, and cast into the fire. I don't want to get into the fire. And all the corruption of your life, you confess. The corruptors in your life, you confess. And you get away, you run away from them. And uh, forgiveness will come. Salvation will come. And when that salvation comes, you keep that salvation and do not allow any corrupter to corrupt you again and when the Lord will come or when you will go to the Lord you will not be in the fire you will be in paradise you will be in heaven your life will be a life that God, that pleases God and he will say come on home and you will get home to the Lord in Jesus name. We are looking at number two here, number two we are looking at the marvelous Vibration, the marvelous vibration from carnality and captivity. From captivity and then from carnality. Look at Job chapter 42, verse 10. And the Lord turned the captivity of Job. What? Captivity of Job? Yes. Sickness that came on him is captivity. And all the boils all over the body could not allow him to go out or to do anything. That's captivity. All the loss that he had and the fire came from the sky and burnt everything. Kept him in captivity of fear. I don't know what will happen tomorrow. I don't know what will happen next week. I lost this. I don't know what I will lose again. But when the Lord had mercy on him, all that captivity, all that fear, all that loss, everything vanished away. He will save you tonight from the captivity of sickness. I said he will save you tonight from the captivity of sickness and the captivity of suffering. Job suffered, but when he prayed and the Lord had mercy on him, all that suffering came to an end. Tonight, that suffering in your life will come to an end. And all the things that were negative before, as the Lord visited him, he turned the captivity 
captivity of Job when he preached for his friends and the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before when your captivity is cancelled tonight multiplication and increase will come to your life prosperity will come to your life and all the things you desire lord i want this i want this and now i'm delivered from that captivity everything you will have in jesus name it will heal you tonight it will deliver you tonight and all those demonic powers demonic entities and demonic spirits that come to put you in captivity tonight deliverance has come look at this look at acts of the apostles chapter 10 and we're reading from verse 38 acts chapter 10 verse 38 how god anointed jesus of nazareth or the holy ghost and with power you see all that jesus did he did by the holy ghost and if we are going to do the works that he did and we're going to enjoy the liberty that he enjoyed and we're going to enjoy the goodness and the great manifestation of power we must have also the holy ghost and the power if you're a believer i'm asking if the holy ghost present in your life if you're a believer i'm asking if the holy ghost prominent in your life that you know he lives within me he acts within me if you're a believer i'm asking you if the holy ghost preeminent in your life and as you come to the crusade as sinners are getting saved as believers are getting sanctified you too you want to have uh, that presence you want to have the prominence you want to have the preeminence of the holy ghost in your life and when when the Holy Ghost is present and prominent and preeminent power will be in your life and when you have a challenge you'll not be going you have to be going to somebody every time pray for me pray for me pray for me are you a believer yes I am pray for yourself ah, I cannot why can't you if the Holy Ghost is there in baptismal measure if the power is there that we get when we're baptized the Holy Ghost you will have the power now jesus has the power and tonight that power will walk in your life yeah. it will liberate you tonight it will set you free tonight how god anointed jesus of nazareth with the holy ghost and with power who went about doing good and it's going about tonight it's going to get your side there it's going to get to your side there yes it's going to get you that's uh, online anywhere you are jesus is the omniscient and the omnipresent one he comes to you right there and he manifests his power he went about he goes about doing good and healing all how many people did he heal how many people is he going to heal today am i one of them i said are you one of them praise the lord jesus christ because he is the liberator the limitless liberator there is no limit of time there is no limit of place there is no limit of nation there is no limit of individuals he is the limitless liberator he will liberate you from that captivity of sickness and that captivity of evil even tonight in jesus name healing all that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him and God is still with him and he like breaks us and he sets us free and when he sets us free we are free I am free remember he sets us free from captivity he sets us free from carnality and hey, look at Romans chapter 8 and I'm reading from verse 5 Romans chapter 8 verse 5 it says for they 
that are after the flesh they that live according to the flesh they that produce the works of the flesh they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh that's what they think about in the day in the night how they're going to do that fleshly thing how they're going to have that fleshly pleasure how they're going to have that fleshly contact that's what they're planning and that's all the strategy they have because they are carnal for they that after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh but they that are after the spirit the things of the spirit look at verse 6 in verse 6 for to be carnally minded is death doesn't matter your name to be carnally minded is death doesn't matter your profession to be carnally minded is death doesn't matter how people exalt you elevate you and you are the best person in their community if you are carnally minded to be carnally minded is death but to be spiritually minded is life and peace look at verse 7 in verse 7 because because the carnal mind is enmity against God it doesn't like the commandments of God it doesn't like the demand of God it doesn't like the, uh, the desires of God all he likes is you know just himself Lord I'm here give me water to drink there I'm thirsty even though I'm carnal I'm not thinking of pleasing you I'm not thinking of going your direction I'm not thinking of obeying you but i need some water there and lord i need some food there i know when i get the strength i'm going to use the strength to contradict you and to oppose you and to disobey you but give me the food anyhow they want blessings from god but they don't want to be obedient to god they are enmity they are in enmity against god because the carnal mind is enmity against god for it is not subject to the law of God. Those are the people that say, there is no law anymore. I can slap you. There's no law anymore. I can steal. There's no law anymore. I'm at liberty. Christ has set me free, they say. And he has set them free to commit adultery. He has set them free to commit fornication. He has set them free to steal. No. You know you are turning the Bible upside down. You are carnal. The carnality that God has recognized he wants to remove because the carnal man the carnal woman the carnal boy the carnal girl the one that is carnal is not subject to the law of God neither indeed can be it's only when Christ comes in Christ will deliver us from every form of carnality in Jesus name and tonight is my night tonight is my night look at verse 11 in verse 11 it tells us but if the spirit of him that raised up jesus from the dead dwell in you he that raised up christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in us i told you we need to have the spirit in us the holy spirit and when he is present in our lives we're saved we're children of god and he quickens us he makes us come alive because at salvation he is present at sanctification it becomes more present prominent in our lives that anywhere we want to go anything we're thinking remember he was present since the time of salvation now sanctification is prominent and when we are baptized in the Holy Ghost immersed in the Holy Ghost endued with the Holy Ghost it becomes preeminent 
in our lives if he is present if he is prominent if he is preeminent that spirit that dwells in us will quicken our mortal bodies sickness will flee away oppression will flee away and all the worry and the anxiety and the fretfulness everything will vanish away in jesus name look at verse 32 in verse 32 he that spared not his own son but delivered him up for us all delivered him up for us all to be our savior he wants everyone to be saved because christ the savior christ the final sacrifice christ our substitute died for everyone his sacrifice is for everyone he was delivered up for us all how shall not he with him also freely give us all things also freely give us all things how many things will he give you tonight how many blessings will he give you tonight for your spirit for your soul for your body he freely gives us all things look at verse 37 in verse 37 nay in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us he loves us he died for us he provides everything for us and tonight you have been more than a conqueror i will be more than a conqueror because i open the door i open the gate and i say come in and he comes in a savior and then all the sins that choose to put your back on the ground that choose to defeat you tonight he comes to life breach you and he comes to set you free new life i said new life righteousness that he gives unto the people that he liberates if the son if the savior if a substitute if the sovereign therefore will set you free make you free he shall be free and free indeed in jesus name and we're looking at number three now number three is the mediatorial love for our conversion and consecration our conversion and consecration look at those two things together we're converted when we're converted we don't go back to our sin when we say i have decided to follow jesus no turning back no turning back that decision marks your conversion but then no turning back no turning back that marks your consecration I have decided to follow Christ though friends oppose me still I will follow that decision I have decided that is conversion and though friends oppose me still I will follow that marks your consecration consecration is attached to that conversion i've decided to follow him follow jesus and it says the world behind me and the cross before me that decision i have decided to follow him that's your conversion and the world behind me and the cross before me that is the consecration you see they are linked together you cannot just say okay i'm converted but i'll not commit myself my life my character to the lord and there's no completeness there the mediatorian love for our conversion and consecration and i pray it will be done in every life tonight in jesus name and when you do that he liberates you through and through he liberates you fully and your life will be totally different will not be like those lives have been before we're looking at first john chapter 4 first john chapter 4 and i'm reading from verse 9 
9. First John chapter 4 verse 9. In this was manifest the love of God toward us because that God sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him live live to please the lord through him live in righteousness through him he sent his only begotten son to die for you on the cross of calvary so that everything that meant corruption and the condemnation and the carnality and the captivity in your life the son that has come tonight he'll wipe everything away you become a new creature in the Lord. And now you live a pleasing life, a God-pleasing life through him. Look at verse 10. In verse 10, it says, Herein is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us. He loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins is through Christ forgiveness comes is through Christ freedom comes is through Christ liberation comes is through Christ the power of the cross will manifest in our lives and those old bad things sinful things we used to do we don't have any interest in them anymore it's come and things are different now since I became born again. Different. Things are different now. Since I became born again. The things I used to drink, I drink them no more. The places I used to go, I go there no more. The violence I used to manifest, I manifest no violence anymore. And the stealing I used to do, I do them no more. And the evil sin that I committed myself to in the past, and I just live like any other person, I don't do that anymore. Things are different now since I became born again. Tonight, you'll be born again. And things will be different. If you've raised up your hand before, but you're still telling the same blatant lies, things are not different. If you say, I raised up my hand, and after you raised up your hand that other night, the following day, you, you remember how you still were fighting, you're not born again yet. Raising up the hand is good. If that brings conversion, change in your life. But if you still, you know, have all those idolatrous things and all the waistband, I raised up my hand, you're not born again yet. If those things are still there, you're still relying on those idolatrous traditional powers. When we're born again, things are different now. And tonight, that difference will come into your life. Different life. No lies anymore. No fighting anymore. No getting drunk anymore. When we're born again, no marijuana anymore to turn your brain. When we're born again, no sexuality anymore. And say run into the, you know, those uh, nine evil things undercover when we are born again things will be totally different and tonight is that night i say tonight is your night it says hearing is love not that we loved god no we didn't love or went to church did we love god didn't we you know still do things that god did not appreciate even though we're going to church it says not that we love god even though we're singing those uh, christian songs did we love god no we didn't because our life did not show that actually christ has done something in our hearts god is love not that we love god but that he loved us
cause and sent his son to be the propitiation, the sacrifice, the atonement for our sins. Look at verse 19 there. In verse 19, we love him because he first loved us. He sent his son to die for us. He loved us. His son sacrifice everything that he had his very life so that we can come to God and be reconciled unto God we love him now because he first loved us if he has forgiven our sins we will love him if he has set us free we will love him if he had broken the yoke of sinning in our lives we will love him if he has brought us into the family of god and now we have the joy of salvation and the peace in salvation and the victory in salvation automatically well, we love him. We love him because he first loved us. And tonight it will happen. I said tonight it will happen. Look at verse 20 there. In verse 20, if a man say, I love God and hated his brother, he is a liar. If a man say, I love God and hated his brother. He is tell me. Tell me out aloud. I remember when I was born again. There was uh, this uh, friend, you know, we were friends together. And when we became, you know, we'll go to, you know, a kind of church together where we beat the drums and dance and all that, and then I became born again. My life became different. And actually, 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 I had, you know, helped him to write exam GCE ordinary level and he passed that mathematics because I was the one that wrote that but when I became born again my life changed and I made restitution and I told him I made restitution and he was still a church man he hated me hated me like you know like you know what they say in our place like shit he hated me and I would say good morning he would look at me and frown because I did the right thing. Because a change came into my life. He didn't like that change. But I'm the one born again and I still loved him. The following morning when I see him, because we're living close together, teaching in the same school, and I say good morning. And he would look at me like, don't greet me. After all. You say you are saved. I am not saved. And I kept on greeting him and greeting him and greeting him. If we say, I love God and hated our brother, we are liars. And eventually, when I will not leave him alone, he looked at me one day. He said, okay, good morning. Then the following day, I greeted him again. When you are born again, there's no malice. When you are born again, there's no animosity. When you are born again, there's no reaction. You do the right thing. And eventually, this man I'm talking about, eventually followed me to a gospel church. And then he too, he became born again. Your friends will become born again. Your foes will become born again. The people that react to you because you do the right thing, you will not say because they frown. Because they will not answer me. Therefore, you hate them. No. Therefore, you change and compromise. No. The right thing you know to do. You continue in that. Because if a man say, I love God, and hateth his brother, is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother, whom he has seen, how can he love God? whom he has not seen. Verse 21. In verse 21, and this commandment have we from him that he who loveth God love 
his brother also. Today, he has like bridge us. From that malice, he will like bridge you. From that animosity, he will like bridge you. From reacting to the people that are good, born again, and are standing for righteousness. And you discover that you hate that righteousness. It will liberate you from the hatred tonight in Jesus' name. It's come to liberate us from corruption. It's come to liberate us from condemnation. It's come to liberate us from the captivity of our sickness. He has come to liberate us from the carnality that does not please God. He has come to liberate us into conversion and into consecration. And tonight, it will set you free. Am I talking to somebody there tonight? Tonight, he'll set you free in Jesus' name. Think about what you will be when there's no corruption in your heart, in your life. When there is no condemnation in your heart, in your life. When there is no captivity of sickness in your body. When there's no carnality in your behavior. What will you be? You'll be a real child of God going to heaven in Jesus' name. Your time has come. My time has come. <laughs> Praise the Lord. This is the time. It's bowed and eyes closed. Today you understand. That's not just raising up your hand. And the corruption is still there. You now want to have real conversion. Real change of heart. A real change of life. And you say, this is what I want. I don't want to be a corrupt tree bringing forth corrupt fruit and eventually I'm cut down and I'm cast into the fire, everlasting fire, eternal fire. I want real conversion and I want real change and I want real transformation wherever you are, Christ is ready to forgive you. Wherever you are, Christ is ready to turn your life around for the better. Wherever you are, Christ is ready to give you complete forgiveness and complete freedom. Heads bowed, eyes closed. You want this real deliverance, liberation from corruption. Wherever you are, raise up that hand. God bless you there. God bless you there. You're making up your mind. You want conversion. You're making up your mind. You are really going to consecrate your life to the Lord. You'll not be up and down. You'll not be raising up your hand and going back to the vomit of the fall. You want this conversion and this salvation. Whatever you are, raise up that hand and say, Lord, I'm here now. I mean this. Now I want want this now i desire this real change real transformation and real conversion if you're raising up your hand god bless you please stand up please stand up you're saying this is what i want salvation this is what i want new life in righteousness this is what i want freedom from anger and freedom from hatred and freedom from keeping malice this is what i want wherever you are you're raising up your hand and you want that love of god to be established in your heart you stand up online the same thing and you're watching over the television you're listening over the radio and you're saying this is what i want total liberation and total freedom and real salvation that changes the heart that changes the mind that changes the behavior that changes even your feeling you want that wherever you are you're watching on television you're over there on the radio you are there online you want this change and transformation you raise up your hand and 
Just stand up. I'm praying for you now. The Lord will set you free. Are you here? Your amen there. Keep on standing. Keep your hand up. And you know why you raised up your hand today. You know you are asking the Lord for total, total conversion. I've decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. The world behind me. The cross before me. No turning back. No turning back. Though friends oppose me. Yet, I'll keep following. No turning back. No turning back. That's why you're standing. And the Lord will confirm that salvation in your heart there tonight in Jesus' name. Father, in Jesus' name. Well, thank you because this is what you want to do in every life. You don't enjoy our just being religious and remaining in corruption and becoming corruptors. You want to take corruption away from our heart, convert us completely, and we will not be corruptors anymore in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray all these who have raised up their hands in sincerity and they are standing and they say they know they cannot save themselves but you are the Savior. I pray bring the salvation to every heart, a transformation to every heart, a regeneration in every heart, conversion in every heart right now in Jesus' name. Send your spirit to be a witness with their hearts. They are now children of God. Holy Spirit, I pray you'll be present in their lives. And that every day and every step, they'll be walking according to your word in Jesus' name. And for those who are saved already, I pray, Lord, Holy Spirit, become prominent in their heart. Sanctify them. Purify them. Let the rain of righteousness come upon their lives in Jesus' name. For those who have the Holy Spirit present and prominent, I pray the Holy Spirit will be preeminent in their lives. Power from on high. Power to do your will. Grant to everyone in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray that you confirm your salvation, eternal life in everyone who has believed on you today. Thank you, Lord. It is done. It is done. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. Keep on standing. Our counselors are there with you. And we we'll call on our moderating overseer to come and help us during this time. And after this uh, counseling session, I'll come back and every captivity of sin and Satan will be broken and destroyed from your life. Congratulations, please. Praise the Lord. All of us who are standing, be patient with those of us who are with you. Just give them all the basic information needed. All this information are meant to help you. So give us all these informations. All our counselors, locate them where they are. And collect all those informations. This also is going on online. Fill all those forms. And those of us who are sitting down, use this time to prepare your heart for the miracles ahead of us. Counsel us, make sure you cover every area, far, front and back. And make sure 
your information are clearly given so that it will be useful for us to help you. We are waiting for you. Do it on time. Very soon. A father in the Lord will be coming up. Prepare your heart. Be expecting, be expecting something greater from God. Just make sure everything is done. Be patient with God. You are going to be located with your problem tonight, with the, pro with the solution from above. Just make sure all the information needed from you are giving us. Cancel us. You will signify by raising up the flags to tell us that you have completed your work. And those of us who are sitting down, you're waiting for the goodness of God. It will never pass you by. And for those of us who are surrendered alive to God today, we need to remind you of the convert banquet that is coming up in every region and not only here in the Alpha location, other locations all over the continent and the globe where this crusade is being aired. Let's take note of that. Excuse me. Any other information on the launching? And we need to remind you again the 3 p.m. luncheon coming up here. For all of us, and for those of us who have been coming, you surrender your life. 3 p.m., right here in this venue, the counselor will give you this information. Very, very important. All these arrangements are meant to help you. Make the best use of them. And let's remind you again, September 3rd, that the first Sunday of this month is not only located or limited to this uh, Alpha location, in all the various regions in the country and in all the other locations, we have this convert banquet here. In the other location, at the headquarters church of all the regions, please take note of that. We're waiting for you, counselors. 
while we're waiting for them. You're also looking up to God. Tonight will be your night. Counselors, yeah, I can see the flags up at the back. I can see it up in the center here. Far away by my left hand. If you have done, raise up your flags at the back. We are still waiting for you. Don't be in a hurry. Make sure you collect all the necessary information. Far away, okay, I can see the flat up. By my left. We are still waiting. Any flag? Okay. We are getting ready. Far away at the center. If we are, if you are done, please raise up the flags. We are waiting. At the back. In the center. Be patient. Yeah, we can see the flags. Anyone at the back? Okay, we can see it at the back. Yeah, we can see it by the left. Please, if you are not being attended to and you are still standing, raise up your hands so the counselor can see you. You are ready. You are ready. I believe you are ready. Praise the Lord. I am ready. Ready for my healing. Ready for my miracle. Ready for deliverance. The Lord is also ready for you. It will touch you right there. It will heal you right there. Whatever challenge you have, He is our loving Lord with limitless liberation. He will liberate you tonight. Raise up that hand and lay the other hand where you have your challenge, where you have the sickness, where you have the bondage, where you have that captivity he went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil for god was with him it's coming to your side right there he's going to heal you right there every kind of sickness whatever the name tonight is your night of liberation at the final amen before you even open your eyes you believe it's done already and as you open your eyes you begin to do what you were not able to do before miracle tonight he's ready for you and you are ready for him we're praying now father in jesus name Loving Lord, we appeal to you. We're asking you, bring limitless vibration to everyone tonight in Jesus' name. Everything that binds, everything that causes pain, I pray, Lord, come with your mighty power, liberate, heal, deliver everyone in Jesus name that demon 
I command you. Get out in Jesus' name. All those spirits walking about in their body, I command you, go out in Jesus' name. All those things, demonic rashes in your body. Are you always scratching, always scratching? I command, be healed in Jesus' name. Every form of swelling, that goiter will go tonight. On to back, you are leaving tonight. Elephantiasis, you are going tonight. Lord, you did it before, do it again. Swelling, come out in Jesus' name. And yeah, you are healed in Jesus' name. Fibroid, you are removed in Jesus' name. Lord, confirm it on everyone. I pray for those who have incurable so-called disease, like cancer, you will not die. You will live. Cancer, be healed in Jesus' name. Also, Peppery sensation in that stomach, the peace, refreshing, like cold milk is coming there right now. Also, be healed in Jesus' name. Kidneys that have stopped working, and then you have to go for dialysis. Lord, I pray, life. Resurrection life, reviving life will come to those kidneys now in Jesus' name. Pain of appendicitis, you are healed in Jesus' name. Those blind eyes, cataract, glaucoma, whatever dimness of sight, I pray be healed in Jesus' name. Lord, let brightness, clarity, calm to those dim eyesight now. Open your eyes and see clearly in Jesus' name. Deaf and dumb. I pray the Lord touch those deaf ears now. Lucy, those dead, dumb tongues now. Be healed in Jesus' name. Pain in every joint. You can't trace the hand. You can't bend the hand in the elbow, in the shoulder, in the wrist, and all the knees and everything. Relief is coming to you right now. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray every eternal sickness, every external sickness, Weakness, deformity, touch them right now. And give them a complete liberation. Limitless liberation. A clear liberation and healing and deliverance for everyone in Jesus' name. It is done. It is confirmed. And when we open our eyes now, you will see it is done. And you will do what you were not able to do before. Receive your miracle. Receive your healing. Receive your deliverance. Thank you, Lord, because we know you have done it. In Jesus' name we pray.